God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll call this May 20th evening commissioners meeting to order. We have the auditors represented, all three commissioners, and the county attorney present. First on our agenda, Christine. Good evening. Hello, how are we doing? Good. I'm great. I'm going to fix this so I don't just yep. stand. Yep, and make sure you don't, so, so you don't trip, step back and trip yourself. Oh. Oh. <coughs> yeah. Okay. I have come today to update you on the events that we normally have, and I have a couple asks. So I'll start with updating. Um, the festival is August 31st. From 11 to 11. Food Fest is October 25th from 4 to 6 30 ish. What was the date on that date, please? October 25th. October. Mm -hmm. Last year we had about 3,000 kids, so we definitely went over 6 30. And then December 6th. Is holiday stroll and that's six to eight so my first ask has to do with the festival and I would first ask to use the courthouse property like we did last year stage and all um, we're going to get electricity over to the Old jail lot. I don't need electricity. Oh, you don't? My stage runs on a generator. Okay. And well, we're, we're getting electricity okay. anyhow. So, so, because yeah. uh, is that the same one Anna Rose bounced us about? Probably. Okay, yeah. I don't know for sure, but probably. Yeah. Um, I'll need water like last time. And like like a hose? What, what, what do you mean water? On the side of the building you have a spigot. Mm -hmm. So we use that. Oh, okay. Just that okay. we need use of water. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, using the courthouse puts it downtown like is, that's my <coughs> jurisdiction technically. Mm -hmm. Well what, what we've done and we talked to the mayor about it too. Brian was there. You can chime in any time. But he agreed to close the road. Uh, Which one? Madison. Madison. Yeah, I just okay. don't think I can think of the road. But Madison, and so then you get you'd have the parking lot, the road, and and that lot over there You'll to set up lot. your stage. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and we we can furnish you water, electricity, whatever else you need. Okay. All right. But we're trying to keep them off the courthouse lawn if we can. I know. I figured with the trees coming out, the lawn's already yeah. messed up, and if you're going to put trees back in, that's going to mess up the grass also so I could also um, contact your um, uh, landscaping people to find out if that would make a difference something that could be done I don't know who they are hi it's I figured or somebody I don't know who your landscaping people are so so you're really not wanting to use the lot I'm really not wanting to use the lot it makes my life harder to have to move everything over there and reconfigure things I had the sound guy come, we looked it down towards the theater, but I don't have the kind of electric this year that I need. There's no 220s, which is what the food vendors take. So they're still gonna be there on 8th Street. Clear over there on 8th Street. My regular vendors would have to be there on 8th Street as well. Now when, when the old is jail property is out of my jurisdiction technically, but it, it's not well, in why because it's county property were you, were you no because it's out of the downtown, of the downtown okay. area okay. Okay. so I had the sound guy look at all the places that could possibly work and the courthouse is the best place based on the way the stage is set up and for sound and not bounce back and not hitting glass and there's a whole bunch of factors that go into this it's not just we want to put it here well, and that's 
that's eventually what we see for that thing is for, for entertainment and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That's that's the reason why we put it the way we did. Right. That's it, it is for it. You know. But you're not using any power cords like you did last year. I'm not sure which event it was. You're right. That is they do have their power cords. The stage itself does not, it runs on a generator for the music and everything that gets set up there. They do have to have those two cords that run from the stage to the sound so those guys can work that. Yeah. And I know that that was the issue last well, time was those cords. Yeah, don't get us wrong, we're, we're not, you know, it, and it's whatever this year, we'll, maybe next year we'll, we'll sit down and try to come up with a big plan to help make things bigger and better for you. Mm -hmm. but. Um, you know, it, and it may sound petty to some, you know, what, the issue we had with the burning of the grass. But I mean, we, you know, we spent a lot of money on, on that and people, I think the community appreciates what the courthouse looks like and what we've done with that and the, the previous commissioners to us. So we're, we're just trying to make sure we can maintain, you know, everything looking good. So I mean, I don't, I mean, we can try again this year since it's, you've already got, I mean, I don't care. I mean, and then maybe we can get together. I mean, we could talk with the landscaping. There's some, maybe there's something that can be put down under it. I don't know. Yeah. I imagine it's because it's in August, and that makes it things hotter, it and be. that's why it happened. So maybe there's something that could be put under there to prevent that or to raise it up or something. Yeah. I, I mean, I, if you really feel you need it there, I mean, we'll try to work something out. Yeah, yes, we'll work I mean. you know, <coughs> okay. But, but. Maybe from then on, we can figure something out for over there. Or yeah, we'll, we'll it's just, the land. we got more time. My time, exactly. My time was just, I was trying to put it somewhere else, and then there were too many roadblocks, and then I felt like there were just so many roadblocks happening that I'm like, does anyone want a festival? Because there are so many roadblocks I'm going through yeah. that I need, you know, like, yeah, we, we're I need to get <laughs> Our maintenance man might skin us, but other than that. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I, we'll see. Maybe there's something that can be done. Maybe rugs can lay there, you know, something. But to be able to just have it there again and then start forward okay. with another plan, I'd really appreciate that. Yeah. You okay with that, Dave? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're good at that. So. Perfect. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And we have one more. Ed is my parade committee. Great yourself. Well, good. Okay. All right. For, first, thank you for allowing it to be there on the courthouse. You, you, you know, you, you said about the, the the grass, man. It's just a great feeling to be able to sit on the grass, listen to some music, and everything else. And, and, and people in the community appreciate that. Now. We're going to get a parade going on here in Rochester, okay? <laughs> Everybody else in the county has a parade. Um, so I figure since we're the county seat, we might as well have a parade as well. So we're going to have a parade, and, and uh, it's going to be before the Arts and Music Festival on August 31st. And the reason I'm stopping here is because we're going to meet at uh, Rochester High School, and that's county property. Already, or, or it's in the county limits, I believe, isn't it? At city That's limits. Schools in city. Okay. Well, I just well, I was told by the by the by the uh, police chief it's county area up until the the three way stop there. No, he may have suggested that because we're, we were the SROs at the school, maybe, but yeah, that's... Okay, that's but anyway, I want to get everybody involved and make sure we're informed <laughs> and everything else, okay? <laughs> Just in case we have a rogue float going out in the county, okay? You guys aren't calling uh, the sheriff to get us. So, so we already went through NDOT, we already went through uh, the high school, we went through the fire ambulance, all the police, all the way up to the state police, uh, the school's post office, and, and uh, the board of uh, works. Everybody else gave us a green thumbs up and everything else. And the other part is, is we're going to have, uh, and I'm not sure whose jurisdiction it is, the, uh, we're going to try and get a semi-trailer, the, the bed where we can put the, the judges' tables on in front of the courthouse on Main Street between 9th and 8th Street, as it looks like by Mike's Trash, right there. So, so then that way we can get it out and that's going to be the end of the parade. We're not going to go up and around the courthouse like before just because of 
it's going to interfere with the, the festival and I don't want a building falling on it going by butts or anything like that. <laughs> so, uh, so we're just going to kind of keep going straight and, uh, and, and then disperse from there. So I just want to give you guys a heads up. If you had any questions, uh, feel free to ask or otherwise I will see you at the parade. Hopefully we can get as many people there as possible because guys, it, it's, it's adamant that this goes off good because, uh, you, you know, like I said, we're the seat of the county. Every other small town in Fulton County has it. They have the same issues we do. It's a lot of paperwork, but we just need all hands on deck in order to get this parade going. I appreciate your effort. Yeah. It'll, it'll be yeah nice sounds good. Time, so. All right. Well, thank you guys very much, and thank you for all you do. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. hearing on the ordinance vacating the public right away and uh, uh, the north south east west alleyways within the original and subsequent plots of the county of Fulton, Indiana, and Hibbert Township. So, um, okay, who is anybody here that wants to speak on that? Okay, state your name, please. And, uh, it's Natalie on BC. Mm -hmm. And I, just, I own the parking that the one I used to have now. And I was just wondering, like, if you vacate the alleyway, open it up, or what, you know, what you call that, is that going to affect, affect the taxes that we pay on the property, or? I, I would imagine that you're going to gain just a little bit of ground. I'm sure it'll, it'll mm -hmm. affect it a little bit, but I don't know. Yeah, it'll it'll have to be minimal. Yeah, so I, so I got that thing here, but I didn't know how much I would gain on it. Well, you'll get, uh, as far as land? Yeah. yeah. You'll gain half the alleyway. On your property, your property is where? I own. You're here. Here and I own this. You own both of these? Yeah. Uh, this guy sold me his property. Oh, oh, okay. Well, then, then if you own on both sides of the alley, you will inherit <coughs> the real estate between your two properties. So you will own the the eleven foot wide alley. And this one here that goes between mine and. This guy's property. Yeah. Uh, Mark, you're okay. And then, so this is a 12 foot wide alleyway. Then, so you would, you would get half of that. You'd gain six feet on this side. Okay. And that's just behind it, mobile home, or is that all the way across the property? It, it's it's the width of the two. Your properties are the same width. Is that looking over here? Is that correct, Mark? The the one yeah the one side the of north it. south yeah yeah yeah. So you would gain. Um, the alleyway only goes to where the electric pole is and then it stops there and then the rest of the it, it, it runs into the east west alley yep yeah so yeah you so your technically your lot would be something like that you, you would you would gain everything on your side okay. and then half of the alleyway correct yep. yeah yep. so that, that's what no, you, so you would gain you're going to gain quite a little bit of ground there okay, Taxes shouldn't go up that much. Oh, no. I mean, it's just, yeah. It should, it should affect you much. Or less. Okay. Yeah, you know, if they need to open it, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, okay. Mark, did you have any other comments on? on does anybody else here uh, want to have a comment on this alleyway? Okay, I'm hearing none. I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3 0. Okay, so we'll have um, ordinance 0318 Uh It's the order. I'll just uh, read this by title only. So we've had already had a reading on it. Yeah. So it's the ordinance uh, vacating public alleyways and north south, north south east west alleyways within the original subsequent plots of Fulton County of the County of Fulton, Indiana, Henry Township, Fulton County, Indiana. So it's ordinance 0318 entertain a motion to approve that ordinance. So moved. Second. Uh, any other questions? Anybody? All in favor? Motion carries 3-0. Uh, 
Okay, you guys have a long day. You too. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yep, we'll see you. Of your choosing, that I spent all firm. 
to protect the county's interest, to ensure the taxpayers are getting what uh, they're paying for, and that the county does not find themselves where we were at uh, in the last two to three years uh, in ambulance service. Now, with that being said, um, what we have uh, agreed to with uh, Parkview is uh, that they are going to provide uh, advanced life support uh, in the county. The three station locations will remain the same. That will be Kiwana, Rochester, and Akron. Um, we've allowed for Parkview to have a ramp up time to achieve uh, full staff and full level of service uh, across the county. Um, we've got this contract before you today. I apologize. And we've got less than 45 days for them to be staffed and equipped to begin providing service. Uh, we do know that day one, um, they will have uh, ambulances stationed in Akron with um, trained medical personnel and a minimum of two paramedics to begin providing that service. Um, and in uh, all transparency with the commissioners, uh, through Gail and through the EMS committee, uh, they'll be working to uh, reach full staff. They've already started the interviews. Uh, they're waiting on your action tonight uh, before they start extending additional offers of employment. Uh, they've lined up uh, three ambulances uh, that will be uh, purchased and assigned to Fulton County uh, for uh, providing ambulance service in the county. This is a four-year agreement. The, the terms and conditions uh, are included in this document. Um, and uh, with your approval tonight, uh, that'll allow Parkview to start moving forward with acquisition of, of equipment and hiring of personnel. Um, with that, I'll pause and see if any of the commissioners have any questions. The, the, <coughs> the recognized questions? No. Not, I think everything was explained pretty fully. So it's looking good, Barry. Okay. Thank you. Do, do we have any public comment or question on where we're at here? Here we go. Okay, Barry. So what we're looking for this evening is for commissioners to um, motion to approve uh, the contract with Parkview EMS as uh, presented subject to non-material changes uh, yet to be made by legal counsel in preparation of the final document. And basically what he's meaning there is, you know, there's some misspellings in it. There's some... Uh, words that need added here and there but it's not material you know they can't change the contract they can't change the price what they're offered none of the material what, what is the price i don't think that was ever mentioned was it well it's yeah. still the 2.4 oh okay yeah it's the, the no one. it's 1.2 1. 1.2 then 1.2 a year for the first barry help me out here three years and nine hundred thousand. the you know last year so for the balance of 24 would be 600,000. In 25 and 26, it's 1.2 million. And in 27, it's 950,000 is the stipend. Uh, in the first 18 months, there is the provision of the 1.2 for uh, capital equipment. And what he's talking about there is if they buy say they go out and buy three ambulances they can't go over 1.2 million dollars we will buy the ambulances we get them back at the end of, if we pull the contract in six months or three years when the contract runs out or four years or whatever we get them assets back so the county will own the ambulances county will yeah. well no, we, don't we, we won't own them as long as parkview's got service but if we cancel the contract or something happens to a contract barry can probably explain it better than i can yeah, there's a provision uh, that you might think of as a callback that if the contract is terminated uh, by either party in the uh, life of the contract, the three ambulances that are purchased uh, that will be identified by BIN to the county uh, will be uh, 
signed over for no additional consideration to the county, uh, as well as the equipment that was purchased to put in there, the power cots, the monitors um, that are part of Parkview's capital asset uh, acquisition. Uh, what I will say is that Parkview does EMS service in its six or seven other counties in Northeast Indiana. Um, this is their uh, business practice uh, for those counties that have not had ambulances to sign over. Uh, is the county uh, as a partner does that, and if we can, the contract was to be terminated, uh, then that equipment is signed back over to uh, the commissioners of the county uh, to be able to be used for the next provider. And also, in that they also maintain and ensure. Operate the uh, it says manager manage register insurer and service yeah, so our that 1.2 million is our obligation. So it's just 600 grand Say that again. this year. The stipend yes. for this year is 600,000. What do you mean, stipend? That's just what we're paying. What we pay, 100,000 or yeah, 100,000 dollars. You figured out 1.2 million equals 100,000 dollars. 600 plus 1.2 for this year. Say that again. 600 plus 1.2 for the equipment. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for the equipment, up, up to. Up, up to. to. Okay, okay, say the say say the three ambulance cost a million bucks. They only get a million dollars. They got to show us receipts gotcha. before. Yeah. So it, it up to 1.2 million. So that's on top of this other, we're, we're buying the ambulances or paying for the ambulances that yeah. did 1.2 million this year? Say that for again. For the duration of the contract. If they, if they get all three ambulances, power cots, and all the equipment in 60 days, we'll pay for up to the 1.2 million it's for that in the 60 days. I mean, so that's, but that's on top of this other. The that's on top of the 600,000. That's the Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we have to come up with that much money. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to yeah. Pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's, it's $100,000 a month. It's, yeah. The 600 is at once, but it's 100 a month. So. But then plus another 600,000 for the service. Yeah, the, for this year. A thousand dollars a month, however they want to say it. Yeah. When right. they start, it's a thousand dollars a month. A hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. What did I say? A thousand. thousand. <laughs> yeah. Plus the one point two million to get the ambulances. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Is there any other questions? Well, we Make sure we understand. Yes. What does that do to our property taxes? Well, we'll have to ask the council tomorrow. Night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it'll do anything to your property well, tax. Property no. tax Just a fine. county tax or what? Steve, here's a council member. He can explain it. Well, I can just be got turned until tomorrow night. But as far as we know, right, probably have to raise the uh, local income tax like two tenths of a percent where the money's coming from, it's not going to affect property taxes. Okay. Okay. Is that, that answer your question for now? Well, yeah, somewhat. <laughs> okay. Still a tax increase one way or the other, but right. it won't be property tax. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. You ready for that motion, Barry? Uh, if you are, Commissioners. You guys have any other questions for Barry or for any clarifications? I don't. Um, actually, I, I, I'm excited for Parkview. You know, Parkview's in our community. They've got a helicopter here. Uh, I think they'll be a good fit. I really do. Um, I know it's a lot of money, but what do you do? you got to have emergency services. <laughs> You know, you, you hear these people that call in for, I heard on the news the other day, somebody called 911, they said they're not a police or nobody available. Wow. You know, come on. <laughs> but. Well, and, and just again, I mean, this has, I know there's a lot of community members that are friends and a lot of Lutheran EMS live here. And it's, this is well above their pay grade, where, where the breakdown has been. It has got nothing. Those guys are great people, guys and ladies, and, mm -hmm. and it's got nothing to do with the boots on the ground. 
So, that, I mean, we want to make sure that's clear because we, that's not where the, the, the breakdown has been. So, um, we'd, just like, so we'd love to see them still employed with Park. Yeah, right. They, they want to do that. So. And they do have a job fair coming up. I think it was this week. Is that what they were talking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So, yes. Okay. So if you're ready, guys, then I would entertain a motion to approve the contract with the Parkview EMS subject to non-material changes made by the legal counsel in preparation of the final document. So moved. Second. Any other questions? Okay, all in favor. Motion carries three and five. Yeah. <laughs> Been a long time coming. Thank you, Barry. Well, Barry. thank you very much. The uh We'll finalize the uh, the document, and you'll probably have that uh, yet this week from Ice Melt. Okay, sounds good. Barry, thank you for right. all your thank time you. for us. Yep. Yep. All right. So we have some ordinances. Okay. Okay, we have the jail ordinance. Okay. So I'm glad you get a read them. Uh, <laughs> right? Okay, we have orders 0416-2024A. It's the amending jail and detention center population general ordinance. Uh, 1019 2020. Whereas the Fulton County Commissioners of Fulton County, Indiana adopted General Ordinance Number 1019020, Jail and Detention Center Population Ordinance on November 2nd, 2020. And County Council adopted on November 17th, 2020, to maximize the revenues by offering available space to out of county inmates at a negotiated per diem per per diem rate per person per day and whereas ordinance 1019 establishes a Fulton County Jail Facility Fund, local fund number 4300 uh, for collected per diem charges for use of unoccupied beds and whereas ordinance 1019 directs said funds collected to be placed in specific categories, 70% will be held for debt reduction. 15% will be held for maintenance of the jail facility and 15% will be held for operation of the jail facility. And whereas it is necessary for keeping the funds separate for the specific, specified use to create additional local funds to hold the charges allocated for housing out of county inmates. And whereas it is necessary to define the purpose of the three um, total funds that will hold the charges collected for out-of-county inmates. <clears throat> Therefore, be it hereby ordained to create a minimum, or create and maintain a total of three funds to hold charges collected for housing out-of-county inmates for use as follows. Number one, the 4300 fund, Fulton County Jail Facility Fund shall now be used for holding 70% of the charges collected for housing out-of-county inmates for a period of 10 years for the purpose of paying down the debt reduction in accordance with applicable Indiana Code and bond trustee guidelines. Number two is 40, Fund 4301. It's a Fulton County Jail Maintenance Fund. Shall be established for holding 15% of the charges collected for housing out of county inmates, for maintaining the jail facility, jail facility grounds, equipment to be used for maintaining, maintaining the facility and or grounds, buildings, or maintaining storage space for equipment to be used for maintaining the facility and or grounds or any other purpose the Fulton County Council approves. Number three is for fund 4302, <coughs> Fulton County Jail Operation Fund, it shall be established um, uh, for holding 15% of the charges um, collected for housing out of county inmates for supporting wages for all sheriff's department personnel, including employees of the jail facility and the sheriff's department employees, merit deputies, benefits, supplemental wages, training, food, medical supplies, and staff. These funds may be utilized as requested by the Fulton County Sheriff and appropriated by the Fulton County Council. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon passage. Okay. 
is this Holly? Is this an order? We want to have three readings on, or is it a we have them all three tonight? I think we can do all three tonight. What it is? Okay. Then uh, I tendered a motion to have the second and third reading by title only. So moved. Second. All in favor? The motion carries. We have ordinance 041 a It's the amending jail and detention center population general ordinance of 1019 2020. Okay. Do we have any questions from anybody on that? Yes. Are those federal inmates or are they? People from other jails in the area, or they're both. We we have a contract with the federal. I mean, Travis, if you want to explain to her what we're both. Uh, you're absolutely right. We, I mean, federal inmates, DOC. Once they're sentenced, DOC, um, we start getting reimbursed for DOC inmates, parole holds, and then out of county inmates. So. so bringing in these federal inmates is that going to have a negative influence here with their families and hangers on or whatever? Mm -hmm. We've been Coming housing here. them for the last, uh, probably a year now, we've had federal inmates, so we haven't had any adverse issues with it or anything. What, what kind of inmates are we talking about? Inmates. Well, I mean. I mean I, yeah, everything. I mean, it's. Multiple it's, murderers. Or I, I mean, it's, it, the thing is with federal crimes, it's, murder's not a federal crime. Um, so you have to commit a federal, so a lot of it is, you know, whether it be drug trafficking or human trafficking or or you know, mm -hmm. computer crimes, wire fraud, things like that. So uh, I'm not going to say if there's not violent inmates in there, okay. um, but we've got county inmates. Are Don't you have right of refusal? If, if Absolutely, you yes. If they become, we've refusal. done it. I think we've only had to, I think we've gotten a hold of Marshall's office on one inmate. If they become a, a management issue, we have no problems in the world calling them up and telling them. So you don't have to take whatever. I mean, right, you, right. So. Yeah, in the, when this ordinance was established in 2020, um, we, we did this so that the council and commissioners unanimously have to pass to be able to change this. That way, some, down the road five years, if everybody changes, somebody can't, well, you've got three or four million dollars sitting in a fund and we want that. Well, hard getting everybody to change is probably, but we want that for the bond reduction that we can do 10 years after we started the jail. So that, that's our main goal is to help pay that bond down. To, you know, for help the tax dollars. We can't pay down for 10 years. There's no danger involved for the community bringing in. I don't. I, I mean, it's it's always dangerous, but it's I mean, it, there's no there's no added danger because it's a federal inmate versus a, a state inmate. So, how well, do most of the federal inmates? It's just kind of they're here for a short time yeah. and then they're yeah they're transferred to. Yeah. Yeah, we probably we don't house them very long. I mean, they're not here for years. No, because it's all pre-sentence. Yeah. So. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? That motion carries 3-0. And uh, we'll have we'll change the wording in here to what I read here, mm -hmm. and we'll sign this. And we'll get party for Sounds good. And then Brian, you'll have that available for the council tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll stop you here tomorrow. Didn't they already sign it? They did, but we. He had oh yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Change okay. okay. Yeah. So four three zero two. Yeah. Okay. So then we have. Um, did we did we read this false alarm ordinance last week? We didn't do anything. Oh, you didn't have that, did you? Or we didn't get it. Right. Uh, so we have ordinance 0508 uh, 2024. It's an ordinance establishing service charges for false alarms reported to Fulton County Sheriff's Office. Whereas Fulton County, whereas the County of Fulton typically responds to burglar alarms when notified by alarm companies and or individuals. And whereas many persons are the owners of the property where the burglar, burglar alarms are installed, are neglect and careless regarding the use of those alarms. And whereas continuous false alarms lower the efficiency and preparedness of the deputies of the Fulton County Sheriff's Office, hereby causing persons with actual alarms or emergencies to be disadvantaged. And whereas experience has indicated that when persons are assessed, when persons are assessed penalties for reporting false alarms, the number of false alarms decreased dramatically. Now therefore be it ordained by the County Commissioners of Fulton County, Indiana, that no person, business, or private institution shall report a false alarm uh, to the Fulton County Sheriff's Office. 
false alarm means in the case of a burglar alarm, an alarm signal or recorded message indicating an attempted or unauthorized intrusion into a structure or the attempted commission of a crime when in fact no evidence exists upon inspection of the premises upon response to such alarm. <coughs> Any person who reports false alarms in Fulton County to Fulton County Sheriff's Office shall be fined as follows during a calendar year. <coughs> one, six false alarms in one calendar year will be allowed no penalty to the uh, property owner. Two, the seventh false alarm will result in a $75 fine. The eighth false alarm will result in a $150 fine. The ninth and subsequent false alarms will result in a $300 fine each. The company reporting a, an alarm as an agent for an alarm holder is not responsible for the payment of these fines as outlined above, which are the sole responsibility of the property owner. The Sheriff of Fulton County shall designate an individual to be in charge of tracking all reported false alarms reported to the Fulton County Sheriff's Office. Any questions on that? No, you're pretty good at reading that. <laughs> Anybody have any questions out here? You got the second page. There is. <laughs> okay, we're still going. Okay, upon the report of a false alarm, the designated person shall, the designated person above, shall send notice to the offending property owner of the fine uh, owed by the property owner in accordance with the above scheduled fines. The property shall the property owner shall have 15 business days in which to pay the fine, which can be paid in cash, check, money order, or at the front window of the Fulton County Sheriff's Office. Failure to pay the assessed fine shall result in a matter being filed in the Superior Court of Fulton County. The property owner shall, the property owner and or alarm company shall then be subject to court costs and attorney's fees in addition to the appropriate fine above. All fines collected in violation of this ordinance and in response to false alarms responded to by the Fulton County Sheriff's Office shall be paid directly to the Fulton County General Fund. This ordinance shall become effective 30 days after its passage upon reading and approval by the Fulton County Commissioners. Okay. Now, any questions? <laughs> Since I got them all read. All right. I think this is probably the same uh, all three readings here. So I entertain a motion to. Uh, have the second, third reading by title only. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. We have ordinance 0508 It's an ordinance establishing service charges for false alarms reported to the Fulton County Sheriff's Office. Make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Any other questions from anyone? Hearing none, any, any, uh, all in favor? That motion carries 3 0. It's an ordinance establishing uh, the approved uses of the Fulton County Jail <coughs> Commissary Fund. Whereas the Fulton County Council is a fiscal body of Fulton County, the state of Indiana, and whereas the Fulton County Sheriff's Office hereafter, F FCSO, maintains uh, the Fulton County Detention Center here and after jail, established pursuant to Indiana Code 36-2-2-24, and said jail operates a commissary fund for the inmates and whereas the Fulton County Council previously established a commissary fund under the administration of the Fulton County Sheriff's Office pursuant to Indiana Code 36-8-10-21 and whereas the sheriff or the sheriff's designee without, appro without appropriation by the Fulton County Council is authorized to distribute money from the commissary fund in accordance with the statute and provisions herein established, whereas Indiana Code 36-8-10-21-D9 permits expenditures of funds on items which benefit the Sheriff's Office as are mutually agreed upon between the Sheriff and the County Council, and now therefore be ordained by the Fulton County Council, County of Fulton, Indiana, State of Indiana, the commissary fund may be utilized 
for the following expenditures. A, commissary operating expenses to include but not limited to obtaining merchandise for resale to inmates, maintenance of the sheriff's, Fulton County Sheriff's Department, and jail facilities and compensation of personnel. B, training of employees. C, equipment purchased and rental to include but not limited to vehicles, vehicle titles, storage facilities, computers, computer software, communication devices, office machinery, office furnishings, camera, photographic equipment, animals, animal training, holding and feeding equipment and supplies for animals, and attire used by an employee in the course of their official duties. D, any acti activity provided to maintain under order and discipline among the inmates. E, any supplies, activities, or programs deemed by the sheriff to be beneficial to the morale or well-being of inmates. F, replacement of lost or damaged inmate property. G, inmate transit cost. H, postage or indigent inmates. I, shipping costs for equipment and evidence. J, replacement of damaged <coughs> county employee property. K, investigation of special detail expenses, including controlled drug buys. L, advertising and sponsorship costs. M, matching funds for grants. N, professional, technical, and legal consulting fees. O, expenses associated with hosting, training, events, and meetings. Um, P, travel costs for employees attending professional meetings. Q, expenses associated with special events for inmates and employees such as holiday events, retirement events, service awards, plaques, recognition events, etc., and are all statutory authorized uses. Well, Travis just stopped short, and you have like four more to go to get seated. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do we have any questions or comments on that? Evidence? Hearing that, I entertain a motion to have the second, third readings of Ordinance 40162. 2024 by title. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries through. There will be horse by time this morning. There will be. Ordinance number 0416024. It's an ordinance establishing the approved uses for Fulton County Jail Commissary Fund. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Any other questions? All in favor? That motion carries through. Speed zone ordinance. This is our second and third reading of this. Ordinance number 0506 um, An ordinance establishing speed limit on part of County Road 800 West near Grass Creek in Wayne Township. Whereas the Fulton County Highway Department and Fulton County Sheriff have completed a traffic study of County Road 800 West as described in subsection 1. It is therefore ordained that the speed limits set forth in subsection one supersedes all prior speed limits in this location. It is further ordained that the Fulton County Highway Department post appropriate speed limit signs to advise motors of the speed limit in this location. A couple spelling errors. Um, speed zone, subsection one, speed zone for County Road 800 West, 45 miles per hour. Speed zone of County 800 West starting at State Road 17 and continuing south for 5,280 feet, ending speed zone County Road 850 South. Do we have anybody here with concerns on that or questions? Okay, hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve ordinance 0506-2024. So moved. Second. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Motion carries 3 0. Spelling errors here. 
Yeah, we'll just sign this when you do the other. Mm -hmm. You can hold it up. We'll get that right here. Okay. So. Okay, you guys had a chance to look at the travel request? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Any questions, concerns? I did not have any. Nope. Make a motion to approve those as presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries through. The sign is 100 and later. Okay, department updates. John Geyer, Highway Department. Just for the record, I think from spelling errors, that was from the last superintendent. I just copied it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. <laughs> we can okay. Fix. We can fix those if we need to. Anybody know the old superintendent? <laughs> We'd like him to stand up. We're back on the table. Um, I got several permit requests for you tonight. Uh, the first one is permit request 2422 from Monty Rands. He's requesting a permit to install a driveway at 170 Owl Drive. We went out there. He's going to have to put a culvert in, but everything looks okay on that one. Looks good. You're okay with everything? Yes. Okay, entertain a motion to approve print 24 22. So moved. Second. All fair. Motion carries to The next one I have is permit request 24 23, uh, Fulton County RMC request a permit to install electrical service 1100 feet west of the intersection of 550 south and 750 west. And there was going to have to uh, cut the road there, but it's a gravel road and they'll put it back in the same condition it is. Don't have any issues with that. Okay. I'm going to get a motion to permit, approve permit 2423. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Motion carries through. Uh, the next one I have is permit request 2424. Uh, David Overmeyer to request a permit to install driveway 75 feet north of 100 north and 400 west. Again, we don't have any issues with this one. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have permit 2424. Motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Motion carries three up. And the last one I have is permit request 2425. Charles McKeon of Frontier North Incorporated requests a permit to bury fiber along County Road 1000 South between 900 West and Cass County Road 175 West. Cass County Road, it doesn't intersect with one of our roads, so that's their stopping point. Okay. You're all right with it, right? Yes. And I think it's a continuation of the project I presented to you the last meeting of the carrying fiber along the county line. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion to approve. Uh, next thing I have for you is. Leslie wanted me to bring this to you today. She updated the permit um, paper. I don't know if you had a chance to look it over. She wanted to kind of streamline it a little because people seem to get confused when they're filling it out how they want it. Basically, it's the same other than they have to check some boxes saying that it's a driveway or if it's a, a bore and a little more detail on what the, the information they give us. The actual wording on the second two and three pages is the same as it was before. Did you send that today? I sent it last Thursday, I believe, Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think it would be helpful. Was she going to work on something for our, the contracts for all our, our other, more like a cover letter? You know, like we do community crossings and various stuff. That it, because I know there's a lot of times you'll have to yeah. dig through. Yeah, we're just nice to put something so. together for that and have that for you. Yeah, I mean, it just it help you out and just mm -hmm. and streamline that process when you open bids for that. Stuff. So you're you're just showing this to us today or what? Uh, I emailed it to you the last week. Yeah, you, yeah. if and you I guys are okay with mm -hmm. it, we could adopt that and use that as a permit form or 
if you don't want to, it's it's fine with me. It looks good to me. How about you? Yeah, whatever makes your guys' job easier. I must have that email because I, I, I didn't see it, John. I'm sorry. I don't, about that. See I don't know if that's see something that has to be approved by you, but I wanted to present it to you before we use it. Looks good to me. Yep. Yeah. I don't know what the yeah, technicality don't know if is. Any. But, you know, it's a change, so I want to make sure you guys were aware of it. Mm -hmm. If it makes it easier and so forth. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we're good with that, John. Okay. Yep. Um, let you know what we've been up to. Uh, the guys have been patching holes, of course, running brush cutter, changing culverts, sodding roads. Uh, we did make our pug. The central paving came in and made uh, about 7,000 tons of pug. It's on the ground. They're, they're pulling out now. And we did begin chip sealing. Uh, we started down in the Liberty Township last week. We got the detour uh, that the state will use later this summer, chip, to try to help curb that, the damage that will come from that. And then uh, we've done a few other roads we had prepped down there at the same time. So that area will be done. Um, but yeah, we were moving forward on, on our roads and stuff. Um, Why I'm on this subject, I did want to hand you, this is a, it's a rough draft of the road program for this year. Thank you. There's still, and you'll see there's a couple areas where we need to add a few roads of chip seal. But it gives you our intent. It's probably 90 per, 90, 95 percent done. But you guys can look at it over. If you got questions, feel free to call me later on and I can explain things or change things however you want to do it. Just, just for clarification for the public or whoever's watching, I mean, our, our roads, I mean, you, we have a the PACER program. Correct. All of our roads are scored and graded. Mm -hmm. And that's how you determine where, where we're at. And we always try to bounce to the corners of the county so we're not in one area. But I mean, yeah. that's. I've had questions people ask me and just just so they know there's not just a you know, my buddies down here you're gonna pay for throw this. a dart at yeah mm -hmm. right there we've got a thick book yes yeah. they're all the roads are graded so that that's how we and, and traffic counts go into consideration on what we do too and you know how often we might chip seal a road or something you know uh, for instance old 31 gets a lot more traffic than 200 south you know, 3,000 mm -hmm. vehicles a day versus 100. Uh, so that'll weigh in too. But there's, there's a lot of factors that go into that. And we try to spread around the money around the townships evenly. Yep. So. There are nice like just to remind people how mm -hmm. that, so. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Um, moving forward, uh, Old 31 South. Tomorrow I have a uh, webinar meeting with. Uh, USI and uh, Reith Riley, uh, they're going to go over, their Reith Riley's getting ready, or Finn and Brown, they go by both names now, uh, are getting ready to start construction on that within a few days, weeks. I'm not exactly sure I'll have more information tomorrow, but uh, meeting with them, but I know that's getting close. Um, Old 31 North RFPs were due Friday for that project, which is in five years. Uh, we got three submittals, I believe, and it'll have to be scored. So I don't know if one of you got, you guys want to decide how that's scored tonight or think about it some more. <coughs> Doesn't matter to me. And who's going to come in and help? Mm -hmm. well, I can do this one. I think those guys do the last. It's up okay. to you. Let me know when you're going to do it. Okay. Uh, probably be a while. Mm -hmm. I know John, John and I are both farming and trying to get that squared away. We've got couple months to get it done so um, state road 14 uh, I know they've been closing that road out there on the west end of the county I know they're in our county working on 14 so there's been quite a bit of traffic diverted around there we've got detours set up uh, they're moving westward towards Winnemac which will ease our pain a little bit in this county on our roads uh, and then I know NDOT's going to close State Route 25 down at Mud Creek here probably in a couple of weeks. So, and uh, while I'm talking about that, um, and I can't remember exactly for sure what the 
protocol was it but we have that detour set up you guys have approved it in the past we've had a speed limit on our detours and i believe that goes on whenever we have the detour but if you guys are okay with that i'll enact that when the time comes what was that 35 yes yeah, so, yeah sounds good yeah. <clears throat> um, and i think it was set up so whenever we had a detour it automatically would go to that yeah. but they've got the signposts and stuff ready so when the time comes they'll slap the signs up good be good to go um Next thing I wanted to talk to you about, I got a quote, and hopefully you look at it, for a mower. Uh, we have it in our budget this year. We budgeted for a mower. And I reached out to uh, locally, and I didn't get any responses. But uh, I don't have a copy of it with me. But um, the one I'm... Looking at it is a flail mower. In the past, we've went with uh, it's a disc mine. Um, here it is. We went with the disc mine type. Uh, we're looking at a, a flail mower, maybe to replace one. They're slightly a couple thousand dollars more than the disc mine, but the maintenance wear on them. <coughs> we're interested in checking that out or trying that out if possible. I don't know, like I say, it's in the budget. If I need to get a approval from you guys to purchase that or. What well, mowers back in the day we used to have, I know we switched over to. We had sickle bar mowers. Sickle Yeah, uh, which yeah. I don't even know if you can get them anymore. <laughs> and I don't think we want to go that I just know we had issues with something. I know yeah. we switched to what you have. And then we went to this fine mowers probably early 2000s. I'm going to guess, okay, and we've been using them, but they're very high maintenance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know some other counties are switching over to these, this type. Yeah. It's, it's a thought. We've tried bush hog types with rotaries, bigger ones. That didn't work out too well for us. You have trouble cutting with high speed and wet grass and that with a lot more. Yeah. So mm -hmm. That's the reason why you always... Mm -hmm. These are supposed to, I'm told, Supposed to be uh, able you know, to compete. We used to have one, and when they get poor, start watching they don't throw a chain. That's a, need to make sure those are always tight, secure, bolts not worn. So when you say you've got the money in your budget, twelve thousand nine hundred dollars. Yeah, I've set aside seventeen thousand to purchase mower this year. Okay. So I have a line item for that, and you can just dump that on your tractor. Yes. Yeah. You said you did reach out local and nobody got back with you. I, I've reached out local twice. I asked for quotes on a flail mower and I haven't received any. And it's been well over a month. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's in your budget. Yeah, I'm going to take a motion to approve his mower. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion to There okay. you go. Um, next thing I have is, I, you did get this sent uh, toward the end of the day. I sent one last week. It was a task order from USI for part-time inspection on the community crossings this year. Um, I wasn't too impressed with the, the quote that was given to us. It was $40,000. I questioned that. Uh, they came back. It was a, basically an accounting error. Um, and they resent a task order today for $21,000. Uh, so I present that to you. Dave pointed out that uh, the starting date on it was the 1st of May and it goes for seven weeks, which we can't guarantee we'll have our projects done by then. Uh, I don't think that was the intent that they had, but uh, if you'd like, I'd have them re rewrite it and then present that to you at the next meeting. We've got time. Yeah, they, yeah, just have them clean it up. I think we just, we don't want to handcuff them if it just, right. yeah. So that was really the only change between the two was the, yeah, the price know, and the date. I, the, you know, yeah, 20 the hours and seven yeah. weeks versus, yeah. yeah. The way that it was explained, it was seven weeks and it would start in May and whenever we yeah. used a week, you know, we'd go on the bill. But 
And, and that's not to exceed. The second one had 20 hours is what it says. Anything else over that would probably have to be built. So. Right, you have to get time to present the next meeting. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what I'd like to do. Um, and then the last thing I have for you, and I believe this got sent to you. I was wanting this to get sent to you on Friday. It didn't. But I know Leslie sent it to you today. And this is the year end report. When's this got to be signed by? Uh, we have to have it submitted by the first of July, uh, June. So that's why I was wanting it to be sent to you last week, and it didn't get done. Okay. But, uh, It's supposed to rain this week. You guys are, I mean, I don't know if you guys want to slide in for maybe Friday or something. I'll put a couple things up for you too. Sounds good. That and we'll show you these other things signed that we got too. Yeah. yeah. We'll, uh, we'll just call me for Friday or something. Okay. Yeah. That, that's Maybe's fine. I, my intent was for you to get it sooner so you had time to look it over. I didn't want to just dump it in your lap. Yeah. yeah that's kind of the way, way things went. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to. And it's probably good. I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. You want to approve it, sign it, and then look and see what's in it? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take him that word. Okay. I believe that's everything I have for you tonight. Okay. Thank you very much, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Travis Heisman. I won't. Good evening. I won't take quite that long. Yeah. <laughs> no, you've already taken a long time. Yeah, with the ordinances, I apologize. He likes that reading. I noticed that. So I emailed the reports out this morning. Um, do you guys have any questions on any of those? Um, we did notice a significant influx in the inmate copay coming in, and that's a direct result from the medical ordinance upping the copay. So um, we turn around, we use that money then to help support the, the cost of the actual QCC contract every year. So. It's definitely helping. Um, we had 130 inmates this morning. Seven of those were federal inmates. 38 were Grant County inmates, and 45 were Howard County inmates. Zero DOC holds right now. Any question on that? Kathy's been doing a good job reaching out to these other counties and saying we've got the bids. So um, 130, we're sitting in a real comfortable spot. It's about 57% of our capacity. Um, it allows for proper classification of the inmates and keep separates and things like that without undue burden on, on the staff. So um, we're pretty comfortable where we're at on that. So um, we invoiced uh, 47,000 in April to the various counties and the, the marshal service for uh, housing inmates. We had uh, corrections and law enforcement appreciation weeks, the last two weeks. Uh, thank you to all the elected officials and other county employees that took time out of their schedule to stop in and say thank you. Um, we had the Ride the Lightning event, the uh, Taser event. That actually blew up. It was super cool. We raised almost $1,600 for Shop of the Cop. Um, two employees miraculously tied at the last minute. So there's two tasings that took place. So. Lucky that one. Yeah, it's, I don't know what happened. More power to them. Yeah, that's exactly they it. The <laughs> they were asking me, you know, we were trying to figure out who, who wants to do it. It's like, no, not me. Yeah. So, you notice know, it was all the young, young ones that were like, okay. Um, uh, on behalf of the Indiana Sheriff's Association, we were able to issue two uh, $750 scholarships to local students. Brianna Yarber, um, she is a senior, will be a senior at Trine University, lives in Rochester. And then Jacob Sager um, lives here in Fulton County. He will be attending IUK in the fall for criminal justice. So um, we were able to uh, issue those last week. Um, 
And then uh, Reserve Deputy Clark Croft uh, attended uh, Kosciuszko County Reserve Academy. Um, it's over 200 hours of training that he volunteered for between January and last week. So um, we appreciate his uh, commitment to that. Um, it's, it's a lot of a lot of volunteering. I mean, the reserve program in itself is is valuable to us, but then being able to volunteer that extra time, that extra training, it's it's, it's an incredible feat. So we appreciate his service. So and that's all I've got. Cool. Any more questions, Charles? Thanks, Charles. Thank you. That's good. Thanks, Charles. Hey, Chad, jail maintenance. <clears throat> Bringing up your ordinances again. The maintenance and storage building for the jail is, I guess, I've been getting some prices and I would like to get your approval on, on building one using the funds from holding down out of county and federal inmates. Um, I got two prices and the one was one one hundred three thousand five hundred dollars, which is a local company. The other one was one hundred thirteen thousand eight hundred nine dollars, and that is not a local company. I reached out to other local companies; they weren't real. Didn't sound like they were real excited about getting the work. So, what size buildings are these? Um, forty by eighty. Well, the side walls? 16. What is in that plan? Does anybody got any idea? 107 towards the beginning of the year. That's the um, that's it. That's at 15 percent maintenance. Yeah, and we, we'd actually talked about the building for a while. And that's kind of what kind of rejuvenated the, the conversation about cleaning up the ordinance. Was really didn't say what maintenance fund could be used for, nor did it say the operations. So that's why we went in and specified those a little bit. So, um, so yeah, it's. Uh, I, th there'll be enough in there for that. We've, we've looked at it and projected out. So yeah, it, it, that maintenance fund should cover the entirety of the project. So local contractor, you say? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a situation that ever since we built jail, we knew we were going to need it because we got too much stuff in the salary port. I know our jail, the last jail inspection, they we try to hide what we can when we know an inspection's coming <laughs> up. So. Yep. Plus, we have the storage units that. Yeah, we pay yearly on. Yeah, we need to get rid of those. I know that's what the money's intended for. So I, I, I guess my feeling is, as long as they don't go over, because there's no spare money to go. Right. No. go and, and that's anymore, so. Yeah, we're I mean, not gonna. That's. I would. I would be happy if we had a little bit of a cushion there. Yeah, that's that's the only thing I, I can see. You know, completely. So. 107 to 103. If somebody misfigures something, then we're, yeah. we're over. So. And like that 107, that was figured, I think, back in February when we first started kicking this around. We should have a little extra in there, especially yeah. like this last month. Yeah, 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 and we'll have 45,000 bills. Yeah, so I mean, even at that, that's uh, four grand, so for last month, so that, that's fairly turnkey, right? I mean, that's concrete. Um, is it lined inside, or is it just actually no? That's not concrete. Concrete is another. Five dollars a square foot, so it'd be another sixteen thousand dollars. With what you build this month, we're bringing what sixty-seven fifty. Yeah. And we're looking at you know for the month of April, for the month of May, we're going to invoice over hundred thousand for out-of-state inmates. So. And it's not. I mean, yeah. there. It's not like you approve it tonight and they're starting it next week. Yeah. I mean, it's they're out. Couple, two to four, two to four months. So. I guess, guess my my thing would be, you know, I'm okay with it, but as long as they don't go over. Yeah, yeah. it's got to be council too. So. Yeah, so they got to go right off of it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm okay with it. I know it's me. So it's not a lot. So uh, yeah, I'm okay. So, yeah. No, that's fine. Is your work council tomorrow night? I can't make it to council tomorrow night. I can do that. It trans, yeah. But that way, they can get on board and see what they want to do. Okay. Yeah. I'll get the exact figure then tomorrow, too. For that yeah, time. just kind of the yeah. nice thing is it's not taxpayer money. <coughs> I mean, it's all money from other counties. Yeah. So. Right. 
other counties tax payer money. It's other counties tax payer money. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way we like it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that build us our building. I said that. Right but no, that, that's fine. Yeah, just we're, we're good. Who, who was the company? Uh, Burns. Okay. 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 That's all I have. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Gail, I don't want to hear that. I think I've got a lot. Okay, three different areas we had to report on today. So we'll start with EMA. Um, the 18,000 has been distributed or um, deposited in County General, the EMPG grant. So you should see that. Uh, this week, uh, we've been quite busy at the EMA office. We had two fatalities and one fire that we responded on. So we had a total of four of our volunteers that went out, including Don and myself. So we've been just a little busy this week. Um, Camp Weekend, June 12th through the 15th, we'll have the Medgator uh, signed out to those folks. And then uh, tomorrow at noon, I will be doing a presentation on emergency management to Rotary Club. And then one last one <coughs> for the uh, EMA is the request for approval for Don to use the mobile time clock app. And here's the situation. So when we get called out, I mean, um, even with the vehicles, it's to the point where we need to take the vehicles home and park them. If we're not gonna be in county, then they can be parked for the volunteers to use, but it's a lot of time wasted going and chasing vehicles and then fixing the time clock issue. This uh, week proved that, I will tell you that. I mean, we were short staff, I had to clock out as the EMA and go get the forensic van and come back. Your cup is up. I was up in so if you don't remember, I don't remember. Or can we just approve it? We can approve it, I think. I thought there was a form. I think we got a form for Do you know, is there we're a, a We're a first responder for EMA, so there shouldn't be one. I mean, we're going to use them for personal vehicles. For a mobile time clock. Oh, oh, I don't know about that. I, I was thinking, but yeah, we can prove it. If we'll there go ahead and prove it, and then if they're, I got to do a spill. Right, true. Yeah. We'll entertain motion to let uh, Dawn mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, access to that mobile app. So move. Move. Okay. So move. 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 Then we're going to skip right on to 911. Um, in Toronto, speaking of the alarm ordinance that you just gave, um, during storms and certain events, those alarms go off numerous times, I will tell you. Um, in Toronto is working with numerous alarm companies, uh, the main one being ADT. They will now come over on Texty. So what happens, all that information comes over on text to 911, and you can pri prioritize those. So during Let's say we have a, a storm in the knock on wood the next two days um, and all the alarms go off, those will start to stack up and the dispatch will have that type of what alarm it is, where it's coming from, if it's a burglar or whatever alarm it is, a trip, fire, and they'll have key holder information and it'll be all typed out. So I will tell you um, when those alarms do go off, it's trying to get key holder, you're calling back and we, during our real emergency. So um, that'll be a great help to us and that'll be installed this Thursday. We'll be testing that out and putting that in. Um, um, then the Liberty Baptist Church, um, they have reached out and um, they're wanting the shelter that we first purchased to begin with that was not large enough for the tower. Uh, I know they are a non-for-profit. We don't know how that works, if we should open that up for bids. Um, I, I don't know what you want. <laughs> Just the, how much is the value of it, do you know? Well, over the threshold, I can yeah. tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. yeah, it's gonna be over five. So I don't know what they're gonna wanna pay for that or whatever. And I don't know where the litigation is with Pyramid and so forth um, when we went here for that. We would have to open it for bids though, but. Okay, all right, 
some notes. And then okay, so, but you know what I'm saying with the pyramid issue that we had with them. Right. I don't know that there is any litigation. Is there? Um, we don't have any yet. Where is that? We went to Charlotte, haven't we? Because I know there's five other counties with them. Yeah. It's been nice to find out whether that's all I have. Yeah. So we really can't sell that until we we yeah. know where that's at. I guess we'll have to do some research. But they are interested. They just built a communication tower. And that's all I have for that. And since Jerry can't be here today, um, she's, and I'm not going to be enthusiastic because I'm a little <laughs> tired as well mm -hmm. this week. So the total Fulton County desk was 56. 30 of those are females, 26 were males. <coughs> From May 1st to the 16th, we had 10 deaths. Eight of those were coroner's calls, and I swear they were in the last week. Uh, why? Um, the total coroner's calls for this year from January 1st to May 16th is 24 females. Well, total of 24, with nine of those being females and 15 males. Um, beyond natural death, we had one farming accident, two motor vehicle accidents, three uh, probable drug overdoses that we're still waiting toxicology for and then three suicides and a reminder that we'll be doing coroner education at the end of June and one of those being Dr. David Alwalt education seminar and that's all I have okay. thanks Gail thanks, thanks Gail. you're welcome and Jerry okay, okay. Michael let go Good evening, Michael. Mm -hmm. Good evening. How are you? Good. Uh, we'll start with the housing. The study technically is finished. We're into the development phase. We have six developers interested in the county, four sites, two of them are fighting. Two each, four of them are fighting over two sites, is what I'm saying. And two of those sites have already had options taken on. For uh, possible development, we're waiting. Um, we have a deadline of July 31. Um, the state has removed a bunch of restrictions for smaller counties and put new restrictions on larger counties for certain tax credits. And what this does is mean that. Fulton County can, a developer coming in can apply for these credits, but if they're going into Kokomo, Indianapolis, Plymouth, anything like that, they're not eligible for those credits. Uh, so that's giving the smaller counties an opportunity um, in this one round. It's a one-time shot, it's over with um, August 1st, and then they can start up again. So you're gonna see a lot of activity uh, where paperwork's concerned, and. Uh, requests for all kinds of information. The phone's ringing off the hook, literally, which is kind of nice, uh, but that keeps me in the office. But, um, so, we've got those things going on. Um, the, let's see, uh, the, we'll go to the industrial park. Um, we're still negotiating on some properties. Now, uh, we've got Jim's properties are pretty much locked down. We're going to be getting signatures um, actually tomorrow. Uh, this ties back into the Ready 2 situation where, um, as you've been told before, the state said give us $75 million worth of uh, projects and we're going to give you $35 million to handle them. You know? So $35 million uh, needed to be cut. We're down to the final $3.5 million and we'll be de dealing with that on uh, Thursday morning. Um, so my job on Thursday morning would be to defend the industrial park because it's three and a half million dollars, <laughs> of course. Uh, Jana's project at the school is, is in great shape. There's no problems there. Um, one of the issues that's coming out of all of this <coughs> is that, um, and you guys know this already, um, there's match to all this. And there's a problem with the smaller counties 
being able to meet the match. Okay, so the Indiana Bond Bank has stepped forward and they are going to give low interest loans between three and five percent to meet that gap. We don't know any more details at this time. As soon as I know, I'll let you guys know. Uh, but it would involve bond attorneys and things like that. So we'll see how that has to work out at this time. But this was announced maybe about four days ago. So uh, like I said, it's brand new. We'll work, work it out and see what we can do to help, whatever we can do. You've got a question. What was um, Baker Tilly coming in to talk about residential TIFs? I mean, I know Trent, was, the mayor, was talking about, I mean, is that, yeah. is that going to happen so that? It's going to happen. Actually, um, Jim Tidd and the regional people want to put one of those seminars on, okay. but they don't want to do it until before November. And it's for elected people, but I can put one together in the next three weeks, which well, I, I can do. Okay. I think it would be beneficial whether we have Jason come up or if Trent's having Eric whatever i mean eric's local it would be closer for him but i think it'd be nice if, if the city and we could sit down and you know the council whatever and that way we could kind of see the options like yeah I said, we can I, open it up to i can put another one of those on it doesn't take that much yeah but i mean so, that's something that's, that's it may be a tool yeah because the bond bank thing i'm i mean it, it's a council i mean that's it well, I don't want to speak out of turn, I and mean, he's not here tonight, but um, the mayor and I have talked about this and the possibility of using it. So uh, using I, I don't know where we're, I mean, it's just open discussions. Using what, the bond bank? Yeah. So I don't know where any of it sits. We'll just, we'll see, but I'll, I can get one of those seminars going. With uh, it'd just be nice to understand. You know, That'd be fine. I mean, for everybody. The council and these guys, because I've sat through a few of those with you, and it's, we can open it up to the public like we did the last yeah, one. It's, it's, I'm, the jury's out with me on the tail, so I, I can't, it's a. I understand. That's, um, it's a complicated issue, and you know that. So, yeah, yeah we, I'll put something Tips has got to be used, right? Well, yeah, but it, you know, the, the catch to it is you, you, you're locking in an area, and then there's no, you lock down your resources for yeah. the county budget or city budget. You don't. It, it, like I said, it, I don't know. I mean, but I know the bond stuff too. I mean, you got bond council. Those guys. I mean, they'll those bond attorneys. Sorry, Colin. They'll they you spend a lot of money with attorneys on a bond deal. So I call them. I'll get something started. Yeah. That's not a problem. But it's just it'd be nice just to kind of have a little refresher yeah. on how they're using it because I think Eric did a good job at that mm -hmm. one housing study explaining the residential mm -hmm. TIF, whether it's good or not. I don't know. Well, we've got, like I said, we've got four, four good sites, two of them pretty much locked down as far as options concerned. One of the things that we've been asking uh, these developers as they come in is if you, because everybody's going to apply for these tax breaks, and the question is if you don't get them, are you staying or are you going? And so I know two of them have said they're in it for the, for the tax breaks, and if they don't get it, they're out the door, which is fine. Uh, that leaves us with four developers and uh, four good sites. Good. So that's where we're at with that. Um, so I've, uh, between the industrial park and the bond bank, I've given you that. The other th side of it is um, Eli Lilly has stepped up and they're throwing $250 million into the ready pot, but it's going to be um, 68 million is going to be used for public art and the rest is going to be used for removal of blight. Um, public art includes murals, um, anything that enhances quote-unquote quality of life as they put it. Uh, blight would be the Putts building or any of the, in, sorry, any of the empty buildings downtown. Uh, anything, actually the whole downtown district could be considered under this, which is probably the way I'll go when we make the application. 
but the information is not completely out there yet, so we don't know everything that's going on. We just know amounts. We don't know deadlines or anything. Um, we did get two grants for Duke Energy, um, $10,000 toward work on the industrial park, which in part includes some due diligence that needs to be done out there, which means Duke Energy is probably going to pick up about a forty to $50,000 tab on doing some studies for us so that we won't have to be spending that. The other grant was $10,000 toward, um, uh, no, $5,000, I'm sorry, toward marketing and uh, creating a website for us. And so there'll be something released to the newspapers in the next couple of weeks or so, and we'll be looking at all that to get that stuff going. And then the last thing I've got is um, I got a call from a site selector company that we visited uh, last summer in Indianapolis and they wanted information on Blackadder Drive. And they're going to start marketing Blackadder Drive for free across the entire state. Good. Yeah, so something, so funny they came out of good about it, out of Blackadder. So, uh, nice. That's about it. Anything else you want? I don't believe so. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Okay, did I miss any comments? Okay. You guys had a chance to. Look the minutes over. We have minutes for mm -hmm. May 6th and the executive of March 29th. Yep, I did. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll sign it. All in favor. Motion carries through. Yeah. Okay, you guys had a chance to look the Financials, claims, transfers, whatnot. Any questions, concerns? No, I don't believe I did. I see the credit card bill was about half of the men. We're not paying that tonight, though, are we? No. Yeah, because I didn't well, see any of it. It was it ain't in the packet. Could we? I didn't see the explanation for it. But yeah, it was in there. Yeah, I didn't think it was. <coughs> I think it was. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I have. Uh, the election pay claim doc at $2,490. Okay, we have the lit distribution, $743,615.08. Okay, we have uh, the EMA performance salary, Grant reimbursement of eighteen thousand dollars. Um, we have the uh, splitting of accounts for the inmate housing from forty three hundred to forty three hundred, forty three hundred one and forty three hundred two of uh, fifty six thousand four hundred eighty five dollars and thirty five cents. We have utilities, $7,267.89. The miscellaneous claims for May 20th, 2024, $614,981.67. We have uh, insurance claim docket for disbursements of 418 to 424 of 24 of $79,460.68. We have insurance claim docket for May fees of $51,810.49. Insurance claim docket for disbursements of 425 to 5124, $22,231.90. The 
transfer request from Superior Court from a maintenance copier, $404, two contracts of $404. Uh, the health department from uh, health department liaison of eighteen thousand seven hundred forty-five dollars to machinery and equipment. Uh, I've got a claim for life link, AED machines, and life vacs for schools in Fulton County. That's a good deal, there. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. We have a transfer from the health department two thousand four hundred ninety-four dollars from repair and maintenance supplies to contractual services. Claim for Woodland Hospital Services for Compassionate Health Care Patients. Budget is enough for the contract to turn that. We have Health Department Maintenance Equipment for $100 to reimbursement of $100. Um, food service permit due to vendor being a wholesale account with some reimbursement. Uh, the Prosecutor's Office. Twelve hundred dollars from software <coughs> to office supplies of twelve hundred. They bought bookcases to increase their storage and organization. I do not anticipate that we will need to make a similar purchase for some time. We have a courthouse uh, annex uh, snow removal, five thousand dollars to landscaping of five thousand dollars. Cost of landscaping for all the buildings. And spray. Yeah, County General, snow removal 3,000 to fire systems. Remove funds to pay the fire inspection, uh, cost of fire and security systems. Surges with Guardian Advocates. Um, last year in September, I believe, you had seen Linda Johnson. <laughs> um, I am now the executive director as she's moved on to retirement happily, gladly, thankfully. Um, get you our brochures here just to give you a little refresher. So when she had came last year, I believe that she had mentioned that we were looking at doing a budget increase for 2025. I'm here just to give you guys an update on the status of our program in Fulton County. Not asking for anything right now, but I will throw out a number and suggestion for whenever I come back later September. So um, Fulton County, we stay pretty steady. Um, However, we have hired an outreach coordinator who's going to make her way, actually she's serving all eight counties. So I work as the executive director for the West Division. We've been serving um, Tipton, Fulton, Howard, Cass, and Miami um, since 2018. Um, well, we actually brought to Fulton and Miami in 2020. So, and you guys have always been in great support of our program and um, helping us out. So with her being added to the program, we hope to reach more um, entities in the community. Um, like I'd given Travis, I know we had uh, a good relationship with um, Sheriff Sailors. Sailors, yes, thank you. And so um, I provided him with our information as well so that way um, he can get familiar with us. But our goal is to uh, reach the most vulnerable population in the communities. Um, again, like I said, I'm, we're staying pretty steady with the six right now, but we have had a few referrals as people start to hear more about us. And um, so when we came to Fulton County, we were in the prime, I mean, just got hit by COVID. So the last, those two years after were kind of a struggle for us. But now that we're getting out there, we're actually working with Hannah over at um, Perkins, and um, she's gonna be a part of our board members for Fulton County. And she's um, implied today, matter of fact, that she has a lot of good resources and reaching out into the community and stuff like that and getting us on um, with um, 
a uh, couple other organizations and groups in the area. We've actually, over the last month, had um, a couple calls from some of the other long-term care facilities, um, and we've gotten about two more referrals from life care centers. We are currently serving three individuals over there. Um, we're good. The six that we have, three are um, intellectually disabled, and then three are elderly. So we've got a pretty good mix here in this county, but we, we want to increase our numbers. We want to improve the community. We don't want people out there. We've seen some pretty deplorable situations and conditions that people can live in, and that's our goal is we want to reach those individuals. The ones that APS can't really say, well, they're an adult. They have the right to make that decision to live like that, whereas we can come in and we can um, coordinate with the physicians and the family members if there's any involved you know, to get the individual the help that they need. Um, we are all about least restrictive alternative. So if we can make it work where we can get at least that individual, maybe their um, onset of dementia and they're not so far gone, but they can continue to live in their home, maybe we can help um, get them the resources that they need nonetheless, not even guardianship, but just resources. Um, so, with that being said, and as we continue to work through Fulton County, last year Linda had asked for 7,500 going into 2025. Um, after looking at the numbers and everything, we'd like to come back and request 6,000 um, for 2025 until we get those numbers up and prove to you our due diligence in the community. So, um, think about it, digest it, and then I'll be back around September and we can talk more about it. We've already been to the city council, so I told them the same thing and they're on board as well. Any questions? I don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. just shoot me a text or email and I can get you on the agenda so we're Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yep. Yeah, I had, uh, I had reached out to um, uh, Christina but I didn't realize she was going to be here tonight. She's supposed to get me on the agenda tonight. So. Well, you need to reach out to me if you want to. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I get her? Can I get your contact from her? Yeah. Okay. And you drop her an email. She'll give you my contact. Okay. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, guys. Okay. Old business. Great. No. Dave. Uh, like to, Holly's got an update for us on that house. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it went into the newspaper on Saturday. The notice of the public sale. We opened, um, the bids are to be mailed or brought in to the commissioners here at 9th Street uh, between May 18th and June the 3rd. And at the June 3rd meeting, uh, we can open those bids. Now, the way this works is that we can open them and we can, the Board of Commissioners have the final approval. So you can reject them even if you have a high bid. You can say, we don't like any of these bids for whatever reason, and we can reject it. And then we can go back and have an actual auction with an auctioneer. There's a, it's a two way to get what you want. If you don't like it the first time, then we can go back and have an auction based on the statute. Mm -hmm. So, but the notice was put in there um, that was in Saturday. It'll run Saturday and Wednesday because that's what the paper does. So. Okay. Sounds good. Nice getting this one rolling. Yep. Yeah. So we're good. I'm sure the ladies like the yeah. one who likes to yeah. like. So. Yeah. Okay. Any, any other old business? Old business room. Anybody? Yeah. yeah. On the housing, what kind of housing are we looking at? Like Section 8 apartment blocks or? Townhouses and apartments, single dwelling. So it's not like the previous proposal we had where everybody was in the I know nothing about that. Well, here. you do, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So it's not on that order? No. 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 So no. is it going to be Section 8 or is it just going to be regular rentals or, or townhouses or whatever? As I said before, it's going to be apartments, townhouses, and single dwelling family. Okay, There's no Section 8 involved. How large of apartment houses are we talking about? That's to be decided. I think the developer, aren't they looking? We've got like one. Four acre lots. They want to put 44 units in on one. Yeah, I want to. So they're not, to my knowledge, unless I'm 
missing a couple of Michaels talked to. I mean, they're, they're smaller tracks, you know, that they're, they're looking at now. I think the biggest one's like 10 acres or something, so it's, you know, it's not a, that, that we're dealing with. I'm not sure what's, I know there's some other people out there doing some talking, but. And where are you going to get all these renters from? Are they going to be imported from city overflows somewhere, or? I don't know. We, we've had the housing study, and, and they, we've been. At well, the, we've had housing the studies for years. I mean, how many housing studies have been done? We all know we need housing in this town, but we don't necessarily need a ghetto. You no, know, it's not the intent. So no. uh, these are going to be a little higher scale. Well, I would hope so, especially with all the stress something like that puts on our infrastructure, the traffic. Police, schools, hospitals, medical, whatever. I mean, should be carefully considered, I would say. Well, yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we. I mean, if somebody wants to come in and do whatever they want to do, I mean, there's not really anything that you know you can stop them from doing if they if they meet the current codes. So well, is there going to be a developer coming in and just put up whatever, and they're out of here, and we're living with whatever we get? I understand your concern. Like I said, there, there's a lot to be determined yet. So. Well, I just hope it's not going to be one of those like our previous issue, which was not good for the town. I think we'll all agree with that. Okay. Thank you. Anything else from anybody on the old business? Is this the old business? Yep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's been one of those days. Okay, new business, Rick? Right? No. Okay. Uh, no, don't, don't. New business? <laughs> you, you always you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> Every meeting. But okay, okay, go ahead. Wednesday, the 23rd, uh, the health department, Dr. Rayburn, is at 1.30, we are giving the ADs and the uh, life bags out to the schools of all of Fulton County. So um, they were supposed to invite you to that. Um, and the newsies, and we're trying to get the schools here to disperse those. If we can't get them here, we will take them to them. Take them to them. So they're getting new ADs, pads, and uh, the life bags are choking devices. Um, so one of those is the private school, Caston, Rochester, and Tippie Valley. Good. Morning, afternoon, all day? At 1.30, no, it's no, just short. It's yes. supposed to be in here, and the uh, news media is supposed to be here. And one thing, one thing that ties into that, you know, the health first, we don't have to do nothing this time around. But I know the health board met and uh, sent a letter of support to keep that going. I don't know if we've ever gotten it. I've never seen it, but there was supposed yeah. to have been a letter of support come out of the health board to okay. keep doing that program. Mm -hmm. I, I think the only thing we got to do if we don't want to do it, I think, is how yeah, it works. We're unlikely to roll unless we send a letter of denial. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's doing thing. a lot of good. Yeah, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Um, any public comment? Steve? I just want to mention we got all the flags up on the veterans graves and all the county cemeteries over the last week and a half or so. <coughs> Once again, on the behalf of the Legion and the PFWs, thank the county and the city for their gesture. generous donation to help with that. Help yeah. Thanks for getting it going, yep. Steve. We appreciate Thanks. it. And, and church. And you had your thing Sunday, right? I did my. We had stuff going on, sickness at the house, I didn't get out. So, uh, that went well? Yeah, went good. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, we are to a motion to recess. To move. Second. Motion to recess. Well, we have to see if we. Because I went all right, you didn't have to